Hello, Chomi. Hello, Queens. Hello, Melanin Magic Society. Welcome to Join the Conversation by POW, the power of wellness movement. My name is Mona Munyani, and for those of you who do not know me, I'm an actress, public figure, and the CEO of the Power of Wellness Movement, a movement that aims to prioritize wellness by having conversations that facilitate our journeys of healing. Today's conversation is about co-parenting. Woo! It can be very spicy, that topic, huh? Okay. So what happens when you have to start raising your child with someone that you are no longer in a love relationship with? What are the challenges that we face? What are our rights in these instances? I would like to know what co-parenting means in terms of the law. What rights does the mother or the father have in terms of access to the child? There's a lot for us to unpack with this one. So let's jump right into it. All right. Let me give you a little bit of an intro about our guest today. She is a, a family law practitioner, a graduate with an LLB from WITS, a member of the Johannesburg Society of Advocates, an Achiever Performance Award holder, and the founder of the Overcomers Headquarters and Movement. Her name is Libo Hans Hola, and I'm very excited to be sitting down with her and unpacking co-parenting from a legal perspective. Uh, I think I need to take, touch on this because I think that it's important. I'm a legal practitioner and I'm also in a co-parenting myself. Uh, my co-parenting is imperfect, but it is working. And I think that's one of the things that I, I, I appreciate about it. Um, really, for me, what has made it work was allowing myself to heal. Uh, I know this is not legal. This is not legal, <laughs> but it's something that I had to do, uh, you know, because I've seen that allowing myself to heal really uh, helped in our co-parenting. Because our co What do you mean by that, actually? When you say, I allowed myself to heal, what do you mean by that? Okay, so first and foremost, when the when the separation began, and you know, I was I was bitter, I was angry. I, I mean, like you know, and those things that come when a relationship ends. Mm -hmm. you know, I was in, I was there, you know, and I saw how I all also almost fell into the trap of using the child to fight my ex, you mm -hmm. know. And I got to a place where I was like, stop a bit, level, you know, stop a bit, you know. Your hurt, your anger needs to take the back seat. The best interest of the child needs to take the front seat. And part of it was in order for me to have a better relationship with the father of my child was me taking charge of my own healing, allowing myself to heal, allowing myself to forgive this person for whatever that happened in the past. Because remember, sometimes the person that you're with might not necessarily have been a best partner to you, but they can still be the best parent to their child. Yes, that's another thing that I had, I had to remind myself of mm. that yes, um, this person might not have been the best partner to me, but they are a parent, a good parent for that matter. Mm. So those are the things you need to mm. consider. And now for me, it helped me so much because we got to a place where, like now, we can talk, we can talk about anything that involves the child without necessarily being angry at each other and all of that. And now taking really things personally. Mm. Yes. So it allow as as a woman allow yourself to heal as a as a dad allow yourself to heal so that you can really bring a healthier version of you into this co-parenting because it is important we are still gonna be in this relationship for a very long time this co-parenting is gonna be there for a very for the rest of our lives for the rest of our lives yeah yeah we need to really allow yourself that, that that that's not legal allow yourself to really take care of you. You know, I love this power of wellness thing. Make sure that you are well so that you bring the, the well version of you into this cooperative so that we can have uh, proper communication relating to the things that involve the child without us necessarily having to fight. I mean, there are going to be fights. Every relationship is like that. There are going to be fights sometimes. But um, oftentimes, in most um, cases, in, when it comes to co-parenting, most of them stem from the anger. Mm -hmm. At that moment, we are not thinking at that moment looking at how we can help one another mm -hmm. but we're forgetting there is a child there's a child exactly that we need to there's keep a it child. this is join the conversation by pow and i am mona manyani let's get into it let us know from a legal perspective what is co-parenting well co-parenting is a situation where parents of a child or children mm -hmm. who are either divorced 
separated or no longer living together share parental rights and responsibilities in respect of the child. The main principle is the principle of the best interest of the child. So when mm. parents make decisions relating to the child, it is important that they make sure that the decision that they are making is in the best interest of the child. Another thing, which I think is very important, it's the change of address. You know, you find that uh, a parent stays with the child, decides I'm changing, you know, I'm, I'm going to move from here. I'm going to stay in another place in Pretoria, for example. Yeah. And the parent doesn't inform the other parent that, you know yeah. what, uh, I'm, I'm moved. Is it an element of kidnapping? I mean, think about it. I, I don't know where my child, the, the last place I, I knew my child was at was at in Centurion. And suddenly now the child is in Joburg and I don't know about it. You know, I mean, you would, uh, I, I know, I know people who've really taken the, these kind of things to court. Because remember, if when you, when you decide to take it to court, you'll have to state in your papers in detail why you would want, for example, the child to come stay with you. Mm. And in those instances, you really need to be as transparent as possible because at the end of the day, um, the court is the guardian of the child, the guardian, and then they are the ones who are finally going to make that decision. And I, I, I honestly believe in honesty, because mm. remember, in any event, you would and David with all these um, details that you, you you believe are in support of your case. Whatever you do, make sure it is in the best interest of the child, not uh, personal vendettas and all of that. You know, that personal I, vendettas. The rights and responsibilities that parents have, could you touch on that when it comes to so the, parity? Okay. So the Children's Act does mention um, four one of which being the right to maintain uh, care. The, the right to maintain contact with the child is the one thing. And it's actually one of those rights and responsibilities that you find parents fighting over. That's the, mm. uh, the right and responsibility to care for the child, uh, to maintain the child. Child maintenance is important. And the last one being uh, the right and responsibility to act as guardian for the child. Those are the four ones that the Children's Act stipulates. So if, if somebody violates that right, they're breaking the law. Yes, they are. So especially where they are, the way you've entered into a parental rights and responsibilities argument with, with, your, with the other parent, you know, and the parent decides, you know what, I know we've signed this thing, but I'm not going to allow this. Yes, there, there is a likelihood of um, imprisonment because they, they will be in breach of that argument. So in those instances where you guys have it written down, but even if it's not written down, I mean, you can still take the other parent to court. But from in, in my position, what I would suggest is really um, giving room to things like um, uh, mediations before running to court. Because mm. they help in really resolving the matter and saving costs as well. Can you imagine after a separation, trying to spend years in court, trying to fight this thing where you could appoint a mediator to really sit down with you and and try and resolve this as amicably, amicably as possible. And let's touch on that. How, how does one go about acquiring a mediator? Well, there are um, qualified mediators. I know at the courts, they have a list of, 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 of these mediators. So you could approach the court uh, for a mediator. You could uh, get that list and appoint one. Um, in some instances, I've seen people go through uh, the family advocate, you know, where uh, you would want your uh, co-parenting plan mm. to be registered. You wanted to have to be registered with the family advocate, so you will go to the family advocate route. And if you don't have funds, I mean, there are still things like oh, legal aid, you know. Um, yeah. Legal aid. You don't have an income because you know after separations and all of that, not everyone lives lives a separate lives a marriage with with a, a living a marriage of a millionaire. So sometimes you really have no cost. There are options or places mm -hmm. you can go to that can put you pro bono. And I know with the Legal Practice Council also has um, on their website, they have forms, you know, where you, you can complete, you send it to them and they can uh, allocate you to someone to assist you pro bono. Stunning. This is Join the Conversation by Pau and I am Mona Manyani. Let's get into it. Essentially, we as birth parents do have legal rights to our children, you know, regardless of what the nature of the relationship with the other parent is. Um, and that if we do get to a point of conflict, mediation is the best step, 
you know, but if you must go the legal route, um, a family advocate and having, you know, an agreement in place to just make sure that everything is regulated uh, and, and kept going for the best interest of the child. How do you impart those kinds of lessons that you have learned and how can people just, I don't know, contact you, access you to be able to get that kind of peace for themselves? I actually, I run a, a healing, I run a, a healing program. All right. Uh, it's, it's a program, something that I've gone through and something I've, I've spent years building, which I've now, I believe it's in a, it's in a place where I can uh, impart to other women so that they can also really come to a place where they can walk in total healing and, you know, become, because you know, I've been healed, guys, it's so nice. You know, it's, it's nice. So, it's so nice. It's nice. Hi, it's nice, it's nice to Ha. It's still a journey, I will say that, you know, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, we must celebrate our victories, we must take full ownership, and I love that as well. You are somebody who understands that when you heal, you want to help others do the same, you want to impart onto others what you've learned so that they can also be okay, you know, but it's still a journey, you have your ups, you have your downs, but you start to become so confident in yourself that look, I know, I know how to get myself back to center, you know? And I think that's what's most important. Could we just, before we, we dash off, touch on your book. Um, please do tell us a little bit about your book. And ah, could you put it closer to the camera so we can see, girl, there it is. She is an overcomer. Touch on that with me for a moment, please, because I love books. I love books, girl. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, uh, this is my latest project. I'm so excited about this project. Why? Because um, first and foremost, the she in this book isn't just about me. Mm -hmm. The she in this book represents, I believe it represents every woman, mm -hmm. you know? It represents every woman. Chances are when you read this book, you're going to find yourself in this book. So this book is really about a young woman's lack of self-love. You know, mm. which resulted in him making a huge mistake. Mm. You know? and, um, from that mistake, you know, it set her up for a relationship failure. Mm. But also, it is about, it is about her victory as well. Her victory when she begins to, you know, take responsibility for her mistake, and when she begins to practice self love. And really, yo, this, listen, guys, this, this, I believe that this book is a life changer. It, and listen, everything that's in here became, yo. You know, as you say that sentence, I'm like, your story is my story. It's our story. It's she's story. She, hey. listen, how do we get copies of the book? Do we pre-order? Is it already um, out there for us to, to buy? What's happening with that? At the moment, people can pre-order. The pre-orders open on the 1st of October, so they are closing right. on the 31st of October. People can order directly from the publisher, which is Overcomers Headquarters. So I'm publishing this through my own business. So it's, yeah. This is my first publishing. Hey! So can pre -order by sending an email to books at Overcomers Headquarters. And uh, yeah, place your order. The book is priced at 250, excluding mm -hmm. delivery. And uh, yes, guys, uh, I'm so excited. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you. I know, we, oh, girl, we could talk forever. We could go on. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a great introductory point for this particular conversation. But what I'm taking away from this is just your overall air of wellness queen. You're just doing the things, self-publishing girl, doing the legal thing, a lot of co-parenting. I'm inspired. I'm so grateful for your time. Um, and I definitely think that you know, you've given people food for thought. Are we doing what's best for our children? You know, are we really healing ourselves? Are we putting aside anger and doing what's best for our children? And I think that's the biggest theme that we can take away from co-parenting. So for me and the power of wellness and join the conversation, this was co-parenting with Mona Manyani. Please join us again as we continue with more conversations that serve to prioritize our wellness. Until next time, thank you so much.
Bye.